A dominating performance in all phases by the Red Hawks gave Miami a 31-7 win over the Flashes and a 2-1 conference mark. This week, the Red Hawks step out of conference play to take on the Black Knights of Army. Chuck Martin talks about both games next here on Red Hawk Football Weekly. This is Red Hawk Football Weekly. Brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton. Refreshing Southwestern Ohio since 1939. By Koenig Equipment. Found online at KoenigEquipment.com. By Marathon. Fueling the American spirit. By Bud Light. Reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Steve Baker talks with Miami head football coach Chuck Martin after this on Red Hawk Football Weekly. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, will be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health, healthcare for the universe of you. Pizza with Pepsi, delicious. Pepsi's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Welcome into Red Hawk Football Weekly. Miami celebrating a 31-6 victory over Kent State at Jaeger Stadium on Saturday. They'll be on the road this Saturday traveling to West Point, New York to take on the Black Knights of Army. Joining me, head coach Chuck Martin. And coach, uh, before we talk about the win, I do want to talk about last week because it was Cancer Awareness Week. Uh, all week long. I mean, the game had a lot to do with it, but I know that your team, uh, you know, has has kids affected. You have a couple of kids that you've adopted uh, as part of the team, and just it was just a good week to remember that there's more than football. Yeah, no, we had a great week. I said Miami football had a great week. Miami athletics had a great week um, with the cancer awareness game and the, the, the thing we do with the helmets and brought some national notoriety to to not, not, not just one form of cancer, but all forms of cancer that we all deal with on a daily basis. And then obviously um, with, with Quentin and Liam, the kids we've adopted, uh, and then with Ernie, uh, another kid that's, that's part of our family, and then the, the, the walk, the night, light the night walk down in Cincinnati that we participated in and we raised a ton of money for. So it was kind of a week-long process and we prepared for a game and we went to classes and then we played a great game on Saturday to top it off. So it, it was a special week for us. We took a lot of time out of our week to, to to really sit back and reflect and, and realize what is important in life and that it is important to support other people and our kids and coaches and our whole, whole outfit did a great job. And, and, and then obviously winning the game on Saturday makes everybody feel even better. Absolutely. And uh, by the way, Quentin, Liam and Ernie all got game balls on Saturday and uh, just uh, an outstanding piece of video that was shot in the locker room for that coach. 31-6, uh, just a dominating performance by your team. Offense, defense, special teams. Uh, every, I don't think you could have executed a game plan any better than, than on Saturday. Yeah, no, we know Kent State coming in has, has a high-powered offense. They had 488 yards a week before against a stingy OU defense. They moved the ball up and down the field. They're really up-tempo has caused issues. Uh, they led Illinois in the fourth quarter. They were tied with Mississippi late. Um, so we knew their offense. So our defense really worked hard all week. Our offensive scouts did an unbelievable job, prepared us for the tempo, and the tempo didn't phase us. We were ready to go on defense every snap, and we shut down an offense that had produced a lot of yards and a lot of points throughout the year. And then offensively, we took over the game, starting with that 98-yard drive and scored touchdowns on four successive possessions and moved the ball and stayed on the field and kept a high-powered, up-tempo offense watching our offense grind out yardage, first downs, and touchdowns. So it was a complete team effort. Uh, besides one fumble punt, I don't have a whole lot to complain about Saturday's game. Exactly, and we'll begin with that 98-yard drive as we take a look at the first half highlights. You take over at your two, and uh, this is a first and 10 from the 14. Gus finds Kenny Young. 
Yeah, Kenny split out at receiver, catching the ball, shocker. With Kenny, it's like, where's Waldo? You got to find Kenny, and he can do so many jobs. And Gus finds him and, and gets us a nice first down. We get eight and a half yards on first down and puts us on a, a, a head of the chains. Third and one, Alonzo Smith, another nice run. Yeah, beautiful hole on third and one. It's hard to have that big a hole on third and one. Offense line does a really nice job. Zoe's very patient. Zoe has unbelievable feel and vision as a tailback. Uh, but we do a really good job up front. And, and again, third down conversions have been key for our offense the last, last few weeks. First and 10 from the Miami 33, and Jack Sorensen gets uh, into the act 27 yards. Yeah, nice play action. Get Jack one-on-one -on, -one on the outside backer on a, on a little post route, little slant route. Gus puts it right on him. Jack makes a catch and gets some yards after the catch. Take a look at it again here, and this is just a great throw by Gus Raglan. Well defended, but right where the defender couldn't get it, and Jack Sorensen did. And again, that one goes for 27 yards and into Kent State territory. Third and two from the 32, Kenny Young with the best run of the day. Yeah, beautiful opening again. Uh, ran, ran a little outside zone play, and you'll see if we see, I don't know if we have the end zone on that or not, but it's a gaping hole, and Kenny explodes through the hole and, and, and gets us another huge first down. Here's a hole again. Me and you, me and you could have got three <laughs> or four. So beautiful job by the boys up front, and then Kenny doesn't need that much help. He explodes and turns what, what might be a short gain into a big one. Second and goal, Gus Ragland. And again, you talk about well blocked. Andrew Homer uh, gets a kick out block there to free up Gus Ragland. Yeah, great job. A good little scheme down there, a little different look for the defense. Uh, they've been very very good at stopping the run in the red zone and we ran the ball very effectively down and tight and obviously Gus showing his dual threat ability everybody asked why we've been so efficient in the red zone I said we've had really good really good plans down there and then you have a quarterback that can beat you with his arm or his legs it's it's, it's always a good option again a third look at it there Kent State would try to answer the initial touchdown but Miami their drive would stall and Trickett would miss a field goal wide left from 43 then with 12 22 to go in the first half Miami again on the move first and 10 from the 26. yeah another beautiful drive starts off with a great completion beautiful throw and catch by Luke Mayock uh, gets his chunk play right off the bat. Again, we've talked about us pushing the ball down the field and becoming more efficient in the last few weeks. We've really done a nice job. Here's a good example. Uh, another chunk play. We had one to Luke last week. We have another one to him this week. You got another one here. First and 10 from the Kent 30. And again, it's Kenny Young this time through the air. Yeah, and again, Kenny Young, where's he at? Now he's at number three. He's been at number one. He's been in the backfield. Uh, Got him in cover two, got Kenny one-on-one -on, -one on a middle backer down the seam. Always a great mismatch for us if you can get Kenny Young on a linebacker. As you can see, beats the backer, clean safety, comes over, makes a nice hit. You're talking about where's Kenny, direct snap to Kenny for a touchdown. There we go. So his versatility and everybody's <laughs> like, good to have Kenny back. Yeah, it's good to have Kenny back. He's a pretty good player. So again, well blocked like you said up front. Uh, big hole and Kenny does the rest. A little bit of trickery, direct snap to Kenny and Gus is the decoy. Your defense has been playing well all day long. Five sacks on the day. This is the first one. Yeah, Dean Lemon does a nice job. Uh, they tried to do a little delay screen the tight end and Junior McMullen snuffed it out and took away took away the throw. Uh, you'll see the tw tight end 26 drifting out right here and Junior's waiting on him and then they have nowhere to throw and Dean does the rest and gets us a huge tackle for loss. Defense had back to back three and outs in between that muffed punt. Miami gets the ball back deep in their own territory and from the 18 it's Nate Becker. Yeah and obviously Nate Becker down the seam again off play action. We're running the ball effectively. We're using our play action effectively. Now we're getting the ball back to Kenny on the perimeter and another, another huge chunk run for Kenny. 27 yards over the left end and again you talk about your line blocking, everybody else blocking the tight ends. This is downfield blocking uh, uh, by your wideouts giving uh, him the edge. Yeah, really nice job on the perimeter. Uh, you, see, you see Isaiah there getting a nice block on the edge. This is a third and 11 play. You'll come up just shy but a great catch in traffic there by Jack Sorensen. Yeah, nice, nice job on third down. Uh, third and 11, that's why it's important to stay ahead of the chains. Is, uh, we got about eight and a half, nine yards, and now we're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and one here, and Mo Thomas will get the carry. And again, well blocked off the right side, he finds the hole. Yeah, and really good run by Mo. Really explosive. There, there was a big enough hole there to get it, but he didn't dance around on short yards. He had two key fourth down carries for us where he got his first downs. Third and goal, and Gus Mayock is wide open in the back of the end zone. Yeah, another good play action. 
uh, trying to bracket coverage. We, we, we play fake to Kenny, and usually Kenny draws some attention. We hit Luke in the back of the end zone, and now we've scored three straight possession and taken commanding lead into halftime. Another look at it here, and you see they bid on the play fake to Kenny Young, and they find Mayock all the way in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. That makes it 21 nothing as the Red Hawks head to the locker room. And, uh, you know, just an outstanding effort by your team in the first half to, uh, you know, as you said, you, once that 98-yard drive happened, it was lights out for the offense. Yeah, shutting out a team that had been very fast starting defensively for, for the whole half, and then obviously offense scoring the last three possessions. Big key was we're up 14 nothing. We get a three and out. They punt it. We fumble the punt. We get another three and out right after. To me, that's, that was kind of the turning point in the right. game because our offense then drives 78 yards and scores a touchdown, and we have a nice, nice solid lead at halftime. 21 nothing is your score at halftime. We'll come back and recap the second half in a moment. Also talk about the Black Knights of Army, Miami's next opponent, all when we return here on Red Hawk Football Weekly. On a forbidden fansville by Dr. Pepper. Ramon, we can't. But Julia. We're rivals. I can love you and still hate your overrated school. We have two different defensive philosophies. You're a base for a three cover two, and I'm an aggressive three forward press coverage. I get it. But we both love Dr. Pepper. Oh, Ramon. Touchdown, State! Yes! In your face! Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. And welcome back in to Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, as uh, we're talking about a 31-6 win by the Miami Red Hawks this past Saturday at Yeager Stadium against the uh, Kent State Golden Flashes. Head coach Chuck Martin rejoins me, and coach, uh, uh, in all of it, the 31-6 victory, your first victory here at Yeager Stadium this season. I know that had to feel good for you and the guys. Yeah, no, it's always you want you want to win all your games, no matter where you play. Obviously, it's even more special when you win them at home in front of your home crowd. So. Uh, uh, we've been playing pretty good football lately, and hopefully we'll continue to play well and keep keep winning games at home and on the road. Yeah, we talked about the defense briefly, and their their back-to-back three-and-out stops. This is a team that over the last two weeks has just been dominating. Yeah, now we yeah. besides a blip in the screen on Western Michigan. Yeah. Since Cincinnati, we've played pretty good defense. If you look at the drives and the points our defense given up, we have not given up many points and we have not given up many drives. So uh, we've been playing pretty solid for six straight weeks. We obviously didn't play well against the pass against Western, but uh, you know, since we shut down Bowling Green, they've been scoring points against the best teams in our league. You know, and, and, and the week before we played Kent State, they're they're going against this really strong OU defense, and they're moving the ball up and down the field on them. So we faced some good offenses, and we've played some really solid football, and we've been pretty beat up on the defensive side of the ball. And you know, you lose your two safeties in the middle of the game Saturday, and you don't really skip a beat, and you continue to get stops and uh, keep putting our offense in, in, in situations where they can be successful. The pressure on the quarterback has been outstanding. Uh, uh, Again, and I think that was a big key to it. Woody Barrett never felt comfortable in the pocket. Yeah, one we one we stopped the run, which they've run the ball. They want to run the ball. Two, we stopped their up tempo screen game. They want to go up tempo and run screens. Koenig annihilated their screen game early, so they couldn't do a big part of what they were trying to do. And then we get them one dimensional. And then, like you said, now it's about pass rush when you can get to the quarterback, even as talented as he is, and he still made some plays. Um, it makes it a lot harder on, on that quarterback when he's under duress, like we talk about every week. You know, it's 21 to six at halftime, and uh, 21 nothing, excuse me, at halftime. Things picked up right where they left off as we take a look at the second half highlights in this game. The defense gets things going, and they get to Woody Barrett. Yeah, get a little pressure, get a sack. Quinn Calcagno had a monster game for us, and he's been playing fantastic football for us this season. Uh, one of the huge leaders for us on defense. Crazy energy guy, crazy effort guy. Motor never stops running. Made a huge play right before the half, chasing them down and causing them to punt the ball. And then this is a huge play start the second half. And you're up 21 nothing. The start's the key. If you can get off to a good start, you can end the game pretty quickly, and that's what we do. Miami's first offensive possession. Uh, we're going to show all three plays in this drive because that's how long it took Miami to get into the end zone. You begin with Davion Johnson into the game, four yards up the middle, puts you right at midfield. 
Yeah, and then second down play, they, they jumped in a four down at halftime. We ran power. We got great blocking inside, but then, like you mentioned, we got good blocking on the perimeter, and then Davian uh, does the rest with his speed and his strength and takes it all the way down inside the five-yard line. Yeah, you're talking about uh, looking at gaping holes. Davion Johnson gets the ball, and it's sealed on the end, and he's off to the races, as you'll see here. This is a 44-yard run by Davion Johnson that sets Miami up at uh, first and goal from the six-yard line, and then you give the ball to Jalen Bester for the score. Yeah, really, really good run exploding through the inside. Nice hole up front. Really quick drive. We get the key stop right off the bat. Offense immediately produces points and uh, you're doing it with your, you know, maybe your fourth and fifth running backs on the field, but really nice seam and really good by Bester exploding through runs through an arm tackle of a D lineman and really, really confident run. There was great to see for Jalen first career touchdown. Kent State puts a drive together and in the red zone, it comes to an abrupt end by Sterling Weatherford. Yeah, caught a little break here, but Sterling makes a nice play on the the ball gets deflected receiver probably should catch that one but uh, when you get opportunities and you catch some breaks you got to finish them and Sterling makes a nice diving interception so uh, one drive Bester gets his first career touchdown mm -hmm. Sterling gets his first career interception Sterling's in for for DeAndre Montgomery at this point who's out with an injury and, and making plays in his absence celebrating the uh, interception there his first career pick and Miami will take over on you know, after the interception and from the 18 it's Jalen Bester again yeah another game hole here and Jalen exploding showing his explosiveness through the hole big chunk run right off the bat getting us out of the hole 22 yard pickup by Jalen Bester gets Miami out near midfield from the 43 yard line again you take a look at the run here and look at the hole up the middle that offensive line has been plowing hole, holes open over the last couple of games that's one of the bigger ones for Bester and here on second and seven from the 43 Andrew Homer yeah, nice job again. You get the run game going, another play action pass, and they're not defending the run very well, so they're chasing after our back, and we're hitting Homer down the middle just like we had Becker down the middle earlier in the day. And uh, again, I'll take a look at it here as the play action and Homer wide open uh, between the, in the seam down the middle, and uh, that is a 27-yard. Third and 16 now from the 36. Again, Bester on the run. Yeah, really good hole, really good decision. Uh, we're a little bit out of field goal range. We're going to have to punt. We run the ball. We don't get all of it, but we get us down and, and get us back in a field goal range. And Sloman does the rest. So really smart third down call uh, on third and 16 and, and, and got us to where we get the ball in easy field goal range for Sloman. He, he bangs it home and gives us a gives us a five score lead. At that point, you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, and that's with 6.03 to go in the third. And uh, from there, uh, Kent State uh, would try their best to get things going, but it went like this for them the rest of the game for the most part. Another sack, the fifth of the day for Miami. Yeah, much like the Akron game, when you get the lead, it's fun. When you're one dimensional and the air team's got to throw the ball, you can kind of tee off with the pass rush. Kenny coming off the edge with pressure. Kimpler keeps coming, makes a great diving sack for us. And again, that's when it gets fun for you defensively when you know they don't have time to run the ball and they, they, we, can, we can get after them and play some third down defense uh, on first down. You know, we talked so much about the defense at the opening of this segment. The offense, uh, you, you, you take a look at the weapons. Where's Kenny? Kenny Young was just incredible for you. Jalen Bester, uh, you know, Alonzo Smith, uh, Davion Johnson, just in the backfield, four different guys all had a big impact in the game. Yeah, and Maurice Thomas Maurice had another Thomas, good game. Yeah, he, had, he, didn't, he didn't have yeah. as many explosive plays, but like I said, two of our key fourth down conversions right. Uh, Mo got us and uh, so you know you got five tailbacks that all contributed uh, to 200 and almost 300 yards yeah, rushing yeah, on the uh -huh. day so uh, it's nice to have that many people back there that can contribute and then they also contribute as you know through the air we, yeah. we we didn't show all the catches but our tailbacks catch a lot of balls in our offense and they're very 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 well-rounded players that play really good football for extremely us extremely versatile the Black Knights of Army will be the next opponent for the Miami Red Hawks that's this noon uh, this Saturday at noon at Mitchie Stadium in West Point. We'll come back and preview that game in just a moment here on Red Hawk Football Weekly. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University.
are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health, healthcare for the universe of you. On a forbidden Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Ramon, we can't. But Julia. Our rivals. I can love you and still hate your overrated school. We have two different defensive philosophies. You're a base four, three, cover two, and I'm an aggressive three, four with press coverage. I get it. But we both love Dr. Pepper. Oh, Ramon. Touchdown, State! Yes! In your face! Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Back on our final segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Happy to have you with us here this Saturday. The Miami Red Hawks on the road non-conference game against the Black Knights of Army at West Point in Mitchie Stadium. Uh, Knights are 4-2 uh, and two on the season. Outstanding season for them so far as uh, Coach Martin rejoins us. And uh, it's an academy. It's got to be an option team and uh, tough to defend. Yeah, no, they do a very nice job. Obviously, uh, they got to... They gotta, Handed Buffalo their only loss this year in a big fashion. They took Oklahoma to overtime in Norman, which um, is a pretty incredible feat. Uh, so they got a really quality football team. Uh, obviously, anytime time you play the academies, you got the history of this. You know, these are people that defend our rights and privileges of being United States citizens. So it's it's always an honor to be involved with them. Then you got the Miami tie to to Army. You got Red Blake, uh, who won three national played at Miami. Miami alum coach started his coaching career. Uh, moves on Dartmouth to Army, wins three national titles. That Army has six undefeated season when Army is one of the top two or three programs in the whole country. Um, uh, you got Bill Gunlock, who coached for Red Blake. Uh, you got Sid Gilman, who was assistant here, went with Red Blake. And I, I know there was others. I don't know all of them, but there's such a Miami connection. Uh, Red Blake is obviously in the, in the College Football Hall of Fame and one of the icons in our coaching profession who's, a, who's part of our cradle of coaches. Uh, so it, it's going to be an exciting week, and uh, defending the, the, what they do on offense is very difficult. They, they possess the ball, but they've been very stingy on defense too, so we've got to work it out for them. Well, that's just it. Uh, 313 and a half yards rushing per game is what they're all about. Uh, only 100 yards passing, but it, they do pass it occasionally. But I was really impressed. Uh, they did, just hammered San Jose State over the weekend, but four turnovers in that game is what the defense forced. Yeah, no, their defense playing well. They, they don't get as much credit because right. every when the offense is prolific as they are, and um, they're averaging, like we said, 40 minutes of possession a game on a 60-minute game is beyond unheard of. So it's, it's very difficult for your offense because they really disrupt the timing of your offense and you sit on the sidelines. Uh, they do such a good job staying ahead of the chains. They're they're so good on third and fourth down efficiency. They're 19 for 21 on fourth down this year. Mm -hmm. So they just don't give you the ball. You don't get a lot of possessions, and they, they drive the ball and they score points. So it's going to be a great challenge for our offense, but our, our, our great challenge for our defense, but our offense has the same challenge. They're really good defensively, and when we're on the field, we got to move the ball, and we got to keep their offense off the field, and we got to score points. Well, it should be an interesting contest. Coach, wish you the best of luck. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Head Coach Chuck Martin joining us here on Red Hawk Football Weekly. And again, the game at West Point in Mitchie Stadium. It is this Saturday at 12 noon. Myself, Terry Bridge, Randy Hollowell will be there and bring you all of the action from West Point, all of the pageantry that is a game at West Point against the Black Knights of Army. That'll do it for this week. Uh, we'll have all the highlights of the game next week for you here. Make sure you tune in then for Red Hawk Football Weekly. This has been Red Hawk Football Weekly, brought to you by G&J Pepsi-Cola of Hamilton, refreshing southwestern Ohio since 1939, by Koenig Equipment, found online at KoenigEquipment.com, by Marathon, fueling the American spirit, by Bud Light, reminding you to enjoy responsibly among friends. Red Hawk Football Weekly is a sports production of Miami University and IMG College. Pizza with Pepsi. Delicious. Pepsi's always had great taste. 
Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. You are the center of a universe. That's what we've learned in 160 years serving our community. Everybody means the world to someone. So when you're in here, or if someday you find yourself in here, and when all you can think about is the world that revolves around you, we'll be a world that revolves around you too. Mercy Health. Healthcare for the universe of you.